Hi, this is Dale Scrimshaw. Hey, we're going to look at another problem here uh, in using Excel for LP. We're going to look at problem 716. You might want to pause the video now and read through 716 so you can uh, have fresh in your mind uh, the uh, parameters for that problem. And assuming you've done that now, what are the variables in the problem? Well, the variables are the number of radio ads and the number of TV ads that we're going to need to, uh, to uh, purchase to maximize coverage. Uh, so the variables I'm going to put in here, I'm going to put in radio ad, and I'm going to put in TV ads. My objective function is going to be it cost uh, I get uh, 3,000 coverage for every radio ad so that's 3,000 and I reach 7,000 people with every TV ad so that's 7,000 so I'm going to put in here for for what goes in uh, cells B and C I'm going to put uh, the I want to say number purchased so the number of radio ads and the number of TV ads that are purchased. And over here, instead of profit, what have I got? I'm going to have coverage, the amount of coverage I get, and the number of people, because radio ads reach 3,000 people and TV ads reach 7,000 people. What are my constraints? Well, I have one constraint in my cost, add cost. A radio ad cost me $200, and a TV ad cost me $500. So subject to the constraint of radio ads at 500 and TV ads at, uh, I mean, radio ads at 200 and TV ads at 500, uh, whatever results I have must be less than or equal to 40,000. So in here, I'm going to put... Uh, my symbol that I want to be sure I keep everything straight so it's less than or equal 40,000. Now what other constraints do I have? Well, this one's a little bit different in that radio ads must be at least 10. There must be at least 10 radio ads. So radio ads uh, must be, and I'm going to slip over here, and radio ads must be uh, greater than or equal to 10. And TV ads must also be greater than or equal to 10. I'm going to need something to calculate against this, so I'm going to put a 1 in here, 1 radio ad, 1 TV ad, and I'll show you in a moment why I'm doing that. And now the last constraint I have is that radio ads must be greater than TV ads. So this would be that radio ads must be equal to or greater than They must be great, equal to or greater than the number of ads that we get in this box when Excel does its calculation. So for that, I'm going to put in this cell equals this number. Now I need my calculations for my, uh, for my formulas. Well, I've got to put another number in here. I've got to put a 1 in there. Okay, forgot to put that in. Now, what's a calculation go in here? Remember, I use sum product, so I'm going to select function X. I'm going to select sum product. In the first array, I want B4, C4. For the second array, I want B5, C5. And that's okay. Now, I'm going to copy this formula down. So I'm going to put my dollar signs here and my dollar signs there. Now I can copy that down. Now you see why I put the 1 in here? 
because when I copy this down, I want it to be able to multiply the number of radio ads times one plus the number of TV ads times nothing, which is zero, and give me a value here to be sure it's greater than 10. That's why I had to put those ones in there. So now let's right click, copy, scroll down, and paste the functions. Very good. I have everything in this now. I have my objective function. I have my cell here where I'm going to calculate things. I'm going to hit my escape key just so I get out of this flashing symbol. I've, I've got this. I've got my formulas in here. I've got everything right here, less than or equals, greater than or equal, greater than or equal, greater than or equal. I put the ones in here so I can do some calculation against the values I need. So I'm ready now to look at solver. And the first thing I see is uh, set objective. Well, that's the cell right here to maximize. By changing variable cells, these two. Subject to constraints, add, add a constraint. This cell less than or equal to this cell. And add, I want to add another constraint. Now, all three of these are greater than or equal to, all three of them. So I can highlight all three of these, change this symbol to greater to or equal, and then in the constraint, highlight all three of these. Tell it that's OK. And now you see what I have here. I can do that. That makes it easier and faster and less opportunity to put in maybe the wrong symbol or get the wrong cell or anything like that. It looks like I'm all ready. I've got everything in here. Simplex LP. Let's click Solver and see what we get. Move this over out of the way to be sure we do have a good value. OK, 175 radio ads, 10 TV ads, my coverage is 595,000 people. Uh, my ad cost is $40,000. My radio ads, 175, is greater than 10. My TV ads, uh, 10, are, are 10. I had to be equal to or greater than 10. And the radio ads of 175 is greater than or equal to 10. It looks like my uh, solver solution is good. That's a different way, that's a way of putting in constraints when they are not uh, both, uh, bo both uh, of your variables are in the same constraint or in a constraint string. That's the way you can do that. You just have to be sure that you get the proper uh, notation for greater than or equal to and the proper values over here in your constraint line. Now as we look at this, if we, if we looked at this, this is the right hand side of your constraint, and this is the left-hand side of your constraint. This is your answer. Over here in Solver, notice we have an answer report and a sensitivity report. If we select answer, it creates a type of the report that you specify and places each report on a separate sheet in the workbook. So answer report, if we select sensitivity, it's going to create a sensitivity report. If we can select reports and limits, we're, we're, we're primarily interested in a sensitivity report. We're going to look at those a little bit. Let's also see what an answer report looks like and tell it that's OK and keep the solver solution. There's our answer report. There's our sensitivity report. Let's look just a little bit here at this answer report. You see, it's, it gives us what happened, that we did find a solution, the options, the objective cell, D5, objective function coverage. The objective function was coverage. Started with zero, and our final value was we, took, we, we covered five, uh, 595,000 people. The number of purchased radio ads, 
Notice here how, how Excel puts these two cells together. I had number purchased and radio as. Those were in two different cells, if you remember right. Excel puts them together. What we're doing and what it is. Number purchased radio ads. Number purchased TV ads. 175 and 10. We'll talk about these other items later. Here we have the ad cost coverage, 40,000. It's binding, there's no slack. Radio ads coverage, 175. It's not binding, it could go down to 160, 165 slack because we said it had to be uh, at least 10, so there's 165 there. And it also said it had to be greater than the TV ads. TV ads coverage was 10. That is binding because we did just get the 10. Now that's binding there. There's no slack. And radio ads coverage 175. That's not binding. And that's a repeat of the other one. Now our sensitivity report. This has a lot of information in it that we're going to look at in a little bit more detail in another video. But we see here the final value for the number purchased radio ads. Uh, reduced cost, that's something we'll talk about. Shadow price, that's something we'll talk about. Right-hand constraint, that's something we'll talk about. An allowable uh, increase or decrease, and then that's something we're going to talk about later. Just to get you familiar right now with the answer report, the sensitivity report. So back to sheet one, and that is problem 716. Well, I hope this has been helpful in another way that you might find that you're going to put your constraints in.